Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, even the CBO Congressional Budget Office, no friend of supply siders, even they acknowledge that Donald Trump corporate tax cuts worked. CBO notes that any improvement in Medicare's fiscal situation is the result of higher payroll taxes following passage of the Trump tax cuts. And in fact, in the latest CBO report, they incorporated the huge surge in tax revenue, which, by the way, accounted for $800 billion, or nearly half of the $1.8 trillion improvement in the FY22 budget gap. The rest of it comes from expiring COVID emergency spending. Now, you can bet that those Trump tax cuts contributed a big chunk to all of that revenue pickup and also to what limited overall prosperity we actually have today. The CBO, by the way, also tipped their hat to two other supply-side criticisms of Bidenomics. One is that all those government checks from the March 2021 so-called emergency spending plan, all those checks boosted demand and contributed to the high rate of inflation. Plus, those very same government checks, according to the CBO, and I'll quote, might also have slowed the recovery of labor force participation in 2021, end quote, indeed. In other words, as the Democrats ended workfare and they paid people not to work with massive assistance payments of all kinds, that postponed job recovery and increased inflation. In other words, big government socialism didn't work. We're delighted to have the CBO on board. That makes, by the way, that makes almost no one left who approves of Biden's radical, progressive, woke economics. But that's about as much cheering of this CBO report that I can muster, because based on current law, we still have multi-trillion dollar deficits as far as the eye can see over the next decade. By 2027, the deficit's back to $1.4 trillion. By 2032, it's $2.2 trillion. In total, deficits will increase by $15.7 trillion. Those are big smackers. As usual, the bill in the deficit story, federal overspending. Even though these COVID emergency programs expire, the government is still set to spend 23.2% of GDP over the next decade. That's well above the 20.8% average during the prior 50 years. Revenue expected to average a little over 18 percent. That is also higher than the 50-year average. So as a result of all this, federal debt held by the public is projected to rise to 109.6 percent of GDP, or a cool $40.2 trillion. Gross federal debt, all of it, which includes internal government transfers, Anyway, that comes to $45.3 trillion. Those are very big numbers. They are very bad numbers. And then, most disappointing, with all of this spending, the CBO, like most of the economics profession, still doesn't believe the American economy can grow. The 10-year average growth rate runs only a tad better than 1.5% per year. That's it. 1.5%. I ask you, is that really the best this country can do? I know the CBO is underestimating inflation. I know they're underestimating interest rates. But it's that growth number that sticks in my craw. Remember, roughly from the end of World War II all through the year 2000, over 50 years, average growth in the U.S. after inflation came to about 3.5% per year. That's right, 3.5% per year. Now, just think how many tens of trillions of dollars of revenue that that would add to slashing deficits and debt. Think about how many more people would be working and earning and paying taxes, especially at lower tax rates. This CBO report, just like all the ones before it, screams for the Laffer curve slash marginal tax rates, build new incentives for economic growth, higher living standards for working folks, greater job opportunities for minorities, plenty of resources for new technologies to make all forms of power and energy cleaner and more efficient, and still plenty of money left over to bolster America's national security. 
Growth solves so many problems. And yet, the bulk of the economics profession is still satisfied, year in and year out, to post long-term trends of so-called secular stagnation of 1.5% per year. You know what? It's a scandal. It's an absolute scandal. And that's why it's time to develop a balanced budget plan that will make America growthier and greater. Tax cuts, deregulation, spending restraint, energy independence, price stability, and king dollar. Get away from big government socialism. Get away from woke progressivism. Get away from this new road to serfdom and get us back to America first. The cavalry's coming. I hope they know what they're doing.